Welcome back to the second part of our training. In this YouTube podcast, we are going to continue to extend our familiarity with the user interface on Maya and its interaction control. To do so, I would advise you to be a copycat in this 10 minutes exercise by following through all the demonstrated working steps for creating a first 3D model. As a start, do ensure the menu set of your Maya is being set to Polygon. Next, go to the menu of display and turn off the view cube. We are going to start with the primitive form of cylinder. To activating the cylinder to set and simply drag and pull in our perspective viewport. Next, turn on the shaded display. In the process of modeling, it is a standard practice for us to turn on the wireframe display on a shaded object that we are working on. Next, go to the channel box and rename this cylinder primitive as Mushroom Base 01. And in the input section, do set the radius to the value of 12 and the value of 1 for the height. Then change the subdivision axis to the value of 8. Next, let's scroll back to the fields of translate and set the translate x and z to 0 while leaving the value of 0 0.5 for the translate y. The purpose for doing so is to raise our mushroom base to sit nicely on top of the grid. Now let's repeat the steps again for creating another 8-sided cylinder form by stacking it on top of the first base mesh that we have created earlier. Next, let's borrow the primitive form of a cylindrical pipe and customize it into a sitting ring which fits nicely to the center of our base mesh. Okay, next let's use a cube and alter it to be the pedestal of a pillar that we are about to build. And as usual, do set a pedestal to the center of the mesh. Next, let's use the cylinder to form an 8-sided shaft for our pillar. Then, raise it on top of our pedestal. Now, let's use the scroll view of our mouse to zoom out for reframing our viewport. You can also pan in downwards by holding down the alternate key and let's zoom in a little closer. Okay. Next, we are going to use the combine function for fusing the pedestal and the 8-sided shaft together for forming the pillar. First, select the shaft, then hold down the shift key to shift select the pedestal. Next, go to the polygon shelf and apply the combine function. Once done, go to the channel box and rename 
this new polygonal object as pillar 01. Next, activate the move manipulator for repositioning the pillar to the edge of the base mesh. Or we can consider placing the pillar on top of the sitting ring by altering the translate X and Y's value. By default, the position of our pillar's pivot point is being set at the bottom after the combined action. And we are going to change the pivot point for matching with our base mesh. To do so, first, holding down the D key for assessing the pivot point, then followed by holding down the V key together, and please do not release your fingers just yet. Now do try to click and drag the pivot point around the base mesh, and you will feel it is snapping onto something. Actually, the V key that you are holding on is a shortcut key of snapping that chases after a vertex point. Now let's move the pivot to the center point of our base mesh. And you can release your fingers now. Next, we are going to duplicate our pillar along the rotation axis of Y, or simply 360 degrees as demonstrated here. There are few ways to attempt an event of duplication and to avoid to manually do it by hand. Go to the Edit menu and look out for the Duplicate Special function and click on this little square option box for calling up the setting menu. First, let's reset its settings. Then, key in the value of 45 degrees in the rotation axis of Y. And followed by, inserting the value of 7 for a number of copies. Simply click Apply and close the menu. Here, you shall see the pillars being uniformly distributed along the sitting ring. You can hold down the alternate key while dragging a left mouse button for observing your masterpiece at the preferred angle. Next, I'm going to use a pipe primitive for modifying it into an entablature. And don't forget to rename every object that you have created in Maya. Lastly, I'm going to create a sheltering roof with a pipe primitive that resembles the one that we had in the school. Next, let's switch our viewport to the front view by first holding down your spacebar and don't release it just yet. Then, click and drag at Maya's label for pointing your mouse cursor towards the label of front view. Now, release both of the spacebar key and left mouse button. Your perspective viewport had just switched to the front view. Let's try to pan our way up for focusing on the roof. Next, select the roof mesh and hold down your right mouse button for assessing its component. Drag your mouse to the label of vertex and let go. Now, try to apply and drag select for grabbing all these vertices as demonstrated here. You can turn off the shaded display when doing the component selections. Next, let's activate the scaling manipulator and drag with your middle mouse button for altering our piping mesh into a reverse cone shape. Simply turn back on the shader display and switch back to the perspective viewport and keep altering it as you like. You can use a move manipulator for increasing its height.
and when you are done with it, simply hold down the right mouse button again and choose object mode. And what happened here is that you have just exited the editing mode. And well done, you have successfully created your first 3D model. To recap, you have learned the function of combine, the shortcut key for changing the pivot point and snapping. You also learned the function of duplicate special. And lastly, the experience for using move and scaling manipulators for editing a polygon primitive. Please do practice again for building this 3D object without referencing to this YouTube podcast and see how much you can retain. Should you find yourself having no problems to recreate this tree model by memory, then please proceed to this studio practice for crafting a modular building block. And that's all for this session. Thank you.